now we have a bit of time for for question you can reserve uh, uh, the possibility to pose a question in the chat wait a moment i have uh, a plenty of questions okay someone uh, patricia uh, open the microphone and the camera so yes. okay hi we'll hello see you. um hi uh, maybe this is not a question that has a simple answer because you've uh, mentioned different things that can make it complicated, but let's try anyway. So, um, at least in the examples we've seen, the um, oracle plays a little bit of a different role in the classical com uh, algorithm versus the quantum algorithm, because the quantum algorithm essentially says, call the oracle once and get all of the answers in superposition, right? And, or at least in some of them, right, in the, in the Deutsch problem. Um, and, you know, I understand that the Oracle is considered like a black box, but it seems to me like there might be a very different kind of black box in one and another or Oracle, because the Oracle that's able to give you the answer in superposition seems quite a lot more complex than the one that can't. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, if we're doing parallelism thesis, then it's clearly like, oh, it's doing a lot more stuff. If it's, uh, oh, well, this is a matter of what basis I represent my stuff in. So, you know, actually I'm doing only one step because, you know, I was doing the same thing, just rotated somehow. Um, then, I don't know, maybe it's arguable that it's actually the same thing. I don't know. But um, can you point somewhere with that? Is it the same kind of object? I mean, I think that's an excellent point. I think that's 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 a very excellent point. It's, so it's it's the it's the same. It's the issue that I was alluding to at the end when I yeah, talked sure. about like how do we count computational steps, right? Yeah. So I, I wasn't I wasn't thinking of oracle invocations when I said that. I was thinking of uh, I was thinking of more like more mundane computational steps, right? Like like mm -hmm. like like is a Hadamard transformation one computational step, right? But it's the same thing, right? Because an oracle is just it's 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 just a unitary transformation, right? yeah. And so, does it count as a computational step in the same way that that like writing to a register to a classical register is a computational step? That's a, that's a, I think that's an excellent point. It's it's it's. Um, um, do I have a good answer to that? Um, I mean, so what I can say in terms of oracles is, again. When we relativize to an oracle, remember that we imagine that an oracle is a black box that takes one computational step, mm -hmm. right? So re regardless of whether it's the quantum oracle or the classical oracle, it's it's a black box that we just we don't we don't think about how it's actually implemented, right? So it's it's by definition magic, you know it's it's a it's it's a magic black box that that gives you the answer to your question in one step, even if that question happens to be the halting problem. Sure, but then it, there's a bit of an issue with comparing apples with oranges, no? Because if, um, well, as you say, like, it is one classical oracle computational step equivalent to one quantum oracle computational step or not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sure. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I, I mean, I agree. It's, it's. I, I, I agree. Like, I think, I think that's, I think that's a good point. Um, I mean, from, for like, from, like, to the extent that that purely abstract considerations apply, it's, it's one step in, in, in it's one step in the algorithm, in, in the sense that, right? I think it's we, we, we imagine that this is implemented in one step. Mm -hmm. But you also want to. I mean, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're alluding, what you're alluding to, but it's maybe related to it, if you want to talk about physical implementation, even if it, even if it, even if, even if we are talking abstractly in that way, right, it's still a quantum algorithm on the one hand and a classical algorithm on the one hand. And there are things that constrain quantum systems on the one hand and that constrain mm -hmm. classical systems on the other hand. And so even at a purely abstract level, there's still a question to be made whether it does make sense to compare apples and oranges in that way. That's fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I mean, I I mean, I take myself to be agreeing with you, right? So. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 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 I think so too. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Other questions? 
In the meantime, I ask a couple of questions to, to Michael. Uh, mm, uh, you presented uh, with a lot of details uh, uh, Yosa and Dodge Yosa algorithm. It's very elegant. Uh, but uh, do, you, do you have perhaps a feeling that uh, this kind of algorithm proposed by Deutsch, Yoz, and Mermin, in a certain sense, uh, are, are done on purpose to show a sort of quantum supremacy? Uh, and this feeling is uh, much less strong when uh, we speak about uh, Shor algorithm, because uh, the problem of uh, the factorization of number is, is a very ancient problem. So there is something deeper that that in the, in the short algorithm, algorithm quantum supremacy is something completely clear. On the contrary, in the other cases, uh, it is uh, uh, it's evident uh, uh, from a mathematical point of view. Perhaps it's more evident than in the in the short algorithm, but. Uh, these arguments are, are, are above all a pedagogical value. This is the first question. The second question concerns the last part of your presentation. We are speak about the possible explanation of the the better uh, the better performance of, of quantum computers. And uh, I, I wonder um, to, 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 to give a, an answer to this, uh, this very difficult question. Perhaps we have before to understand what, what we mean with the term explanation. Because from an intuitive point of view, in a certain sense, it's obvious that uh, quantum mechanics have some, quantum computer has something more because of the superposition of the states. But uh, uh, what does mean uh, to es to explain? Uh, I, I I wonder what does mean to explain this uh, this uh, uh, capability of quantum computer to to transform to to, to make uh, tasks with, uh, with in a much much more efficient way. This is my these these are my questions. Okay, thank you. Uh... Second. So, for the first, uh, regards to the first question, uh, so yes, it's it, it is true. So the 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 algorithms that I presented and the and in general the early quantum algorithms were useful mainly for pedagogical reasons. They don't solve problems that uh, that we actually want to solve in in real life necessarily. Right. Whereas Shor's algorithm, what makes it so impressive is. On the one hand, it's non-relativized, uh, and on the other hand, it's uh, it's an actual useful thing to want to do, right? Um, that said, I mean, so I mean, that said, I mean, it's it's less useful ped pedagogically to 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 explain Shor's algorithm because when you explain Shor's algorithm, you know, like I've I've done it before in in, in lectures, and it's like you end up talking like. 90% of the time about, you know, classical period finding. And then you end up talking, you know, like, like, like for a few minutes about, you know, the quantum circuit that, that, that gives you, that oh. gives you the, the shortcut. So pedagogically it's less nice. Um, but one thing I could say, uh, so, so, so I, I, I accept the point that yes, these, these, these artificial uh, algorithms uh, are, are less interesting from that, from that point of view. That said, I mean, it's still the case. So ped pedagogical value is still value. And um, uh, what's, what's, what's important in this, in, this, uh, in this way is that Shor's algorithm was, so Shor, Shor was led to Shor's algorithm by considering Simon's algorithm. Yes. Right, so Shor, as, I, as I mentioned uh, in one of the later slides, Simon's algorithm is for period finding when the functions are periodic under modulo two addition. Whereas Shor's algorithm does a similar thing, but in, in the case of Shor, it's ordinary addition, not modulo two addition. And so, and so, and so like, so the, the Shor was inspired, let's put it that way, by Simon's algorithm into, into, the, into the algorithm for factoring. So it's useful in that, in that sense. They're useful in that sense. Uh, and the other thing is that, uh, and I mean, it's, it's, 
same point essentially, but even though the problems they they solve are artificial, they illustrate techniques. Mm -hmm. right? they illustrate techniques uh, that one can employ in in, uh, in 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 writing a quantum algorithm. For example, we saw in both in, in both the the Deutsch Josha and in the Bernstein Vazirani case that we started off with a Hadamard transformation, sure. followed by a unitary, followed by another Hadamard. Right. So that's a common thing that you that you see. Right. So like these are. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say that there are, there are principal strategies, but there are there are rules of thumb that come to light when we when we look at these when we look at these these algorithms. As so is that a, that okay for the first question? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, it was not a criticism; it was an, <laughs> okay. a very general observation. Okay. Okay. Well, but it's it's a good one, and, and so I, so I agree. Um, as for the second question. So yeah, I mean that's also that's also a very good question. It's like what, when we say we want to explain quantum speed up, what do we mean, right? And um, so one thing for so I, me I mentioned the the many worlds explanation of quantum computing, and one thing that uh, someone who wants to, so some people who want to defend the many worlds explanation will say, and I think I think it's a sensible thing to say. So and Ewood Horseman uh, says this in her two thousand nine paper that uh, that I mentioned. Um, is that, I mean, and David Wallace says this in his paper on, uh, on, on, on Everett, not in the context of computation, um, that, I mean, our criteria for world identification for, for Wallace and for, and for Horsman is uh, for all practical purposes criteria. So for them, explanation amounts to, um, to undergirding the practical claims that we make. So when we call something a tiger, right, we want to be able to explain how we were able to call something a tiger, even if the underlying stuff that we that we use to explain the tiger doesn't necessarily map on in a clean one-to-one -one way, right? So uh, these concepts are, are for all practical purposes. And so when we say that we're explaining quantum computation in terms of many worlds, we're, we're, it's okay if we admit that there are coherent superpositions, but for all practical purposes, these are distinguishable. We, we might want to say, right? So we want to be able to have that pragmatic element in, in our in, in explanation. If you if you're inclined towards that point of view, I would say. And so that isn't a definition of what it means to explain, but it, but it, but it but it tells you that on on that account of on on those attempts to give an explanation for for, for quantum for for quantum speed up. Pragmatic considerations are very important. Right? Another another way of approaching the question uh, is you can think of um, so one. So I'm going to get into this more tomorrow, actually. But one uh, one answer to the to the the Gossman nil problem, the Gossman nil theorem, as an argument against entanglement being an explanation for quantum speed up. Uh, so so, so that so that so that theorem shows that there are some quantum computers that sometimes enter entangled states that don't give you a quantum speed up. But I think one way to to defend uh, uh, to defend uh, the idea that entanglement uh, is an is a kind of explanation for quantum speed up is by saying that it makes it possible, right? It makes it possible for. for for, for a quantum computer to, to achieve a quantum speed up, whereas without it, it's not possible. So that's kind of like a how possibly explanation, right? And so we're, 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 explaining, we're explaining how something is possible by, by pointing to the underlying structure, you know, like the underlying structure of the state space of a quantum system, right? And we're saying this state space allows a quantum computer to achieve, to, to, to achieve a quantum speed up, even if it doesn't always do so, you know, like even if you don't always choose to, to take advantage of those resources. So there, there are different modes of explanation, and in this literature, it isn't always clear what notion of explanation people are using, right? So this, a lot of this literature is disconnected from the from from literature in general philosophy of science related to explanation. So people use explanation. I mean, implicitly, they're referring to some kind of uh, ontic. Uh, Causal type explanation along the lines of Patrick Sub, uh, no, Patrick Sub, sorry, along the lines of uh, 
what's his name? Oh, uh, Dow, you know, like like uh, like Phil Dow or or Wes Salmon or that kind of thing. So they're implicitly using that kind of thing, right? So where you have, like, what is what is the actual causal history of a system that that allows it to to, to yield a certain result? So I think a lot in a lot of cases they're implicitly using that kind of that kind of mode of explanation, but not always, and it's not always clear because people are not always explicit about it. And like part of the reason is like a lot of the people who are thinking and debating about this are theoretical physicists and they don't always, they don't, they're not always familiar with, uh, with, uh, with general philosophical, general philosophy of science distinctions that people make between different types of explanation. But it is uh, to be clear, like to actually compare these different explanations for quantum speed up. Again, I think to, to make, it's a similar point to the one that Patricia made. That it's like you have to compare apples to apples, right? Mm -hmm. Not apples to oranges. And so, if you're going to compare which one for instance, is a better explanation, you better be clear on what explanation what what explanation means for you. Yes, I re I remember there was, there are no questions, so Tuesday so I take advantage of the situation. <laughs> Uh, I remember the first uh, conference on quantum computation to which I, take, I took part in 1990, 30 years ago. Well, there was uh, Arthur Eckert and the other in, uh, in Cesena uh, in Italy. And uh, I, remember, I remember the, the argument by, by Eckert. He, he, he moved from, uh, uh, he, he built on uh, scientific realism applied to quantum mechanics to say that the superposition must be something real. And so uh, uh, to, to, to build uh, to build the quantum computer will be possible. And I, I, I my, my reaction was was uh, straightforward. I, I, but, but how you can apply realism to quantum mechanics? Uh, we know that uh, 30, 30 years ago, eh? How you can apply uh, realism to quantum mechanics? We know that realism and quantum mechanics are not so compatible. And uh, he was uh, a bit struck with this kind of argument. But in a certain sense, uh, his attitude uh, uh, persuaded me that uh, that that uh, uh, empirically, uh, quantum computer now we know that are, are really possible, even if. Uh, we know that the coherence is, is really frail. Uh, it is very easy to, we must uh, make that, we must keep, uh, maintain the, the, the coherence. It is very difficult and so on. But uh, that, that quantum that are possible in a certain sense is one of the, of the argument favoring quantum realism. And since quantum, since one of the, the, the best form of quantum reality is many words, in a in certain sense, is an argument powering many word interpretation, even not definitively clearly. Yeah? Yep. So uh, I, I understood that, uh, that Wallace and other scholars, uh, defenders of this, this kind of approach, uh, find in quantum computing a sort of uh, confirmation of their point of view. The weakness, I don't know what, what you wrote in this paper, you, you quote before, but the, the, the point to me, to me, the criticism that one can make to this uh, kind of interpretation, but, but perhaps tomorrow you, you come back on this topic, eh? um, is that uh, uh, quantum, uh, quant many words cannot work without the coherence. And so, in a certain sense, it is not, it's not so clear that it is a confirmation of uh, many words or, or a more uh, uh, a weaker interpretation of quantum mechanics. I don't know what you think about, but perhaps it's the topic of your next uh, conference, next lecture. Well, um, actually, no, I won't be talking about many worlds tomorrow, but, uh, but also I'll, I'll say a few things now. Um, I mean, so uh, so with respect to whether decoherence is essential in your in your account of many worlds, it depends on what kind of Everettian you are. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're if if you're if you're David Wallace or if you're if you're an Oxford Everettian of that that ilk, then yes, decoherence figures importantly, and you need to be able to tell the story about how it works in in, in the context of quantum, of quantum computing. Um, 
if you're another type of ever radiant of radiance so like they're called full state realism where where you don't need to distinguish a preferred basis you think of them as all equally real you know in some, in some sense and that problem doesn't really affect you because uh, all you have now is just that you have the quantum state and it can be decomposed in whatever basis you like and well that's the explanation um, so so you don't need decoherence so much on that approach that said it doesn't I'm not clear how, uh, how that kind of approach would help you so much with explaining quantum computing because the, the, the Everettian approach to explaining quantum computing relies on the fact that we want to be, we have we we have this distinguished uh, notion. It seems to me. So, um, um, but be that as it may, so uh, uh, so so I mean, all, all that was just essentially just to say that it depends on the type of Everettian you are. So depending on what there, there are many varieties of Everettians, and then the, and depending on which one you are, uh, uh, decoherence may be more or less important. Um, now it's true that uh, uh, people like uh, so uh, researchers like David Deutsch have argued, and Wallace as well have argued that uh, quantum computer, computing furnishes a kind of evidence for the for the many worlds interpretation, or maybe even more generally, as you mentioned, people take quantum computing to to furnish a kind of evidence for a realist interpretation of quantum mechanics. And so, I mean, the so the 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 only answer I can give to to that is. Well, I'll just put it in uh, Deutsch's terms. So, so, so Deutsch, in his uh, I forget what year the book was published, but the Fabric of Reality put, book he published, he, he wrote in I guess the '90s. He wrote, "Quantum compu computation furnishes evidence for many worlds. To those who defend another interpretation, I challenge you to give an account in your interpretation of quantum computing." And all I can say is that people have done that. You know, like so, like there there are Bohmian accounts, for instance, of quantum computing. The quantum logical account explanation of quantum computing that I mentioned briefly earlier is essentially a by from, that, from Jeff Boob is essentially a kind of Copenhagen type yes. approach, right? Yeah. And so one can give an account of quantum computation, and sometimes very compelling ones. I think the quantum logical one is is a very nice one, yeah. and it, it like it really it really does uh, does help to help to explain things. I would, I would say, um, and that doesn't rely on many worlds, right? So um, so I mean, uh, I mean, uh, none of these explanations are. I think none of these explanations are going to be conclusive in favor of one or the other. But the challenge is, I think Deutsch was completely correct to say that, like as like stated stated as a fact, what Deutsch wrote was false. But stated as a challenge, like so, what he wrote was false in the sense that no other ex no other interpretation of quantum mechanics can explain quantum computing. So I think that's false. But stated as a challenge, it, it was it's, it's a completely appropriate thing to say, right? Yeah. So we have this fact that's called quantum computing, and we have this fact that's called quantum computational speed up over known classical algorithms. And if you want to defend your your preferred interpretation of quantum mechanics, it's incumbent upon you to explain how quantum computing works under your interpretation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a perfectly appropriate thing to say. But I think it has been answered and under under many interpretations. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much.